Earlier today, the temporary memorial that honored the heroes of Flight 93 was closed for the last time. Tomorrow, the first phase of the permanent memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, will open to the public. The project has been a struggle to fund, design, and build. One local man has played an important role in making it a reality. Fox 5's Paul Wagner has the story. On the morning of September 11th, as first responders were trying to save lives at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, Calvin Wilson was on the phone with his wife, listening to a story that at first made no sense. When my wife said that she believes that the, the fourth plane uh, that they were talking about was Leroy's plane, and I was like, I was like, well, that can't be because he's going in the other direction. I said, you know, he's, he's, he's heading out to California. But the reports were true. Leroy's plane was down. So now I'm like watching the, the towers collapse and then I'm trying to figure out, you know, really what's going on. The days that followed left Wilson and his family wondering what really happened inside that jet that crashed in Pennsylvania. Did his brother-in-law, the co-pilot, have time to fight back? By the 20th of September, after listening to the plane's voice recorder, FBI Director Robert Mueller knew the truth. The passengers and crew were, quote, absolute heroes. Our admiration and our respect for those passengers is shared by just about everybody in the country. It was, it was a mix of mixed emotions. You know, we, we were, like, again, we were very proud they went down fighting um, just to show that, that we're not going to just lay down type of thing. But um, the fact that it was a little bit more um, gory or tragic than it than we really want to think about was was the other feeling. Based on phone calls made from the plane, investigators knew early on there were four hijackers on board and the passengers were planning an assault. The target, investigators now believe, Washington, D.C. and the U.S. Capitol. I've come to love all of them because I've been dealing with them so long, the 40 heroes. Uh, but it's, it's like you said before, when I, when I look at him, I look at the pictures, uh, I look at his daughter and his wife, I'm, you know, I'm... Ten years later, uh, I'm so proud to have been a part of his family and, and to know him. Leroy Homer Jr. grew up in New York, the only boy in a family of eight. After graduating from the Air Force Academy, Leroy flew starlifters in Desert Storm and Desert Shield. He was, to say the least, a modest man. We found out more about him after he, he left us than we did because he never told us about the, the medals and the awards and, you know, and certificates and, you know, all these things that people were sharing with us. What, what we're looking at is, is the 40-foot walls I was In the living room that. of his Herndon home, Calvin Wilson showed us the design for the permanent memorial in Shanksville, only a part of which will be complete when it's finally open to the public. And this is the 40 rows of 40 uh, trees that I was telling you about. A labor of love that has, for Calvin Wilson, certainly had its moments. We quickly learned <laughs> that... Um, uh, corporate America who we thought, you know, and I know New York went through the same thing and they, they had to go through their shocks initially that, you know, people weren't th that willing to, to give up the dollars. But Wilson's heart has been warmed time and again by people's generosity. Most recently, when workers tried to move a 17-ton boulder to the spot where the plane first hit the ground. It was a challenge. I happened to be there that day when, when those guys decided that they were going to take this 17 ton boulder and, and, and mark the, the, the grave site for us. And um, the number of chains that snapped, you know, the truck being lifted off the ground, uh, um, the, the, the people there that made the decisions, you know, told the, the workers that, you know, forget it, we'll take the smaller boulder. And those guys, um, Those guys looked us in the face and said, they deserve this one. Um, I just can't, I just can't get past that. Calvin Wilson says this memorial is not for the 40 families who lost loved ones that day. It's for the generations to come who will learn firsthand the heroism of Leroy Homer Jr. and the 39 others who died on Flight 93. For the last 10 years, the coroner in Shanksville has kept in his possession three caskets filled with unidentified remains. On Monday, the memorial will be closed to all but the 40 families and their representatives, and those three caskets will be buried in what the families call the sacred ground. In the Fox 5 newsroom, 
I'm Paul Wagner.